All right, I got a couple more pieces of this stuff. Nice flint. It's got inclusions though. We'll see. We shall see. There's a crack right there. So this side looks pretty bad, but the other side might be good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's see. This side's bad, probably. Yep, got some cracks on that side. To adjust the camera uh, just a little bit. Alright. What is the size? What is the size? Four and three eighths. Yeah, 110 millimeter. It looks like it goes in kind of deep. We shall see. See, why did I why did I take that flake off? Because I wanted to take this flake off. <laughs> yeah. Why did I shoot it across there? Because I wanted to shoot it across there. Yeah. You didn't know? Why did I take that one off? Because I wanted to get rid of that right there. So I could see what is in there. What good did it do me to see what's in there? I don't know. I knew it was, it was, I knew it was messed up. I got to lose it anyway. Let's see. Why am I hitting right there? So I want to take this flick off. Yeah. <laughs> you guys will probably hate me after a whole video of that. Yeah. Let's see. I got to get rid of the lump and the turtle back. I mean, come on. Let's let's take off the worst first. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can do it. I might have to get out the cheater tool. There's no might about it. I'm gonna. All right. It's been beaten up pretty bad, so I need to smooth it out. It makes better contact when it gets smoothed out. Yeah. Funny how that works. All right. So why did I put it there? Because I want to remove that. Mm-hmm. Light taps first to see if it's doing anything. It's not doing anything. All right, let's do some heavier taps. Yeah, that's good quality stuff. I don't know. Let me see. I let me look around for opportunities. Did I miss something? Is there an opportunity? Maybe, maybe not. There's some risky things I could do. Is uh, napping a lot like chess, you know, you, you study the board and you see what moves you can do. Is it like chess? Is it a game between you and the rock? Yes, it is, actually. Yeah, sometimes it's deja vu. Like, I've been in the situation before and it's like a chess game. The player you're up against, sometimes they are very similar, but different people, but very similar in the way they play. Same with rocks, you know, 
different rock, but somehow it's very similar to something you've done before. So you look at the opportunities kind of in the same way. I spin around, I'm, I'm examining the board looking for opportunities for the best moves or the best flake removals. There are many options in the beginning, just like chess, there's many openings, many gambits. Your, your options narrow as you go along. You got lots of options in the beginning. So basically anywhere you hit in the beginning is a good hit because it doesn't matter. A lot of options in the beginning. You start getting toward the end. Like I said, the options start to diminish. So, you know, I obviously have to get rid of that. So if I make any flakes in that direction, the reason why I'm making flakes in that direction is because I want to get rid of that. Yeah. Easy. Easy peasy. To figure out what I'm doing. Right? No? Some of you totally lost. If I don't discuss what I'm doing, you're totally helplessly untethered like a man in a spacesuit out in orbit by himself. Oxygen's running out. What do I do? I don't know what he's doing. Just drifting in space. Oxygen is limited. I'm doomed. All right, so I took a big risk. Why? Because I wanted to remove it. It did remove it, but there was a weak spot. See, totally concealed. There's no way to know. See, the weak spot is right in there. Look, voila, like an Oreo cookie. See that? No one could know that there was a weak spot right there. It looked good from the outside. Some will say, why did you do that? It looks, there's a weak spot right there. It was kind of stupid, huh? Well, I didn't see it. It's like one of those pastries with the little filling. Yeah, looks yummy. <laughs> okay, are we going off the deep end? No, it's just, it's just way too hot today. So I gotta, gotta liven things up. Yeah, it's like a hundred and... It's over 100, and it's it's already, like, what, 9-something, 9, 9 p.m.? Still 100 degrees? I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. All right. What can I make now? It's so tiny. What did I lose? I lost a lot. No more 110 centimeter, or 110 millimeter. Nope. It's tiny now. Look at that. It's only 3 and an eighth. It was 4 and 3 eighths, right? I lost quite a bit. Now all I can make is something lame. Unless I bring out the other piece. Maybe that's better. No. Probably not. I agree. You, all you guys have said no, probably not. But I agree. Probably not better. So we stick with this one. Besides, if I stick with this one. I can call this video a rock to point. Rock to point. Start with scratch. Or almost start from scratch and make a point out of it. Go through all the stages. Yep. All the stages. This is not so easy to nap as the other one. This is this lighter material. It's tougher. Who would have thunk it? Am I being sarcastic? Oh yes. You can kind of tell it's going to get gnarly when the color starts to get lighter. Yeah, with a lot of flint napping experience, it's like, uh-oh. Color is changing. Chances are it's going to get nasty and gnarly. You never know, though. I've had pieces that are nicer in the middle. It's very rare, but I've had it happen. Mainly because there's not as many cracks. You know, I've had stuff that's cracked on the outside. That's pretty obvious, you know. 
the middle gets a little bit better because it's not so cracked. But usually when it's getting toward the center of the Tootsie Roll or Tootsie Pop, it's difficult, difficult to chew on, so to speak, when you get to the center of the rock or the center of the Tootsie Pop. Well, Tootsie Pops are softer in the center, so it's not a good analogy. Nope. It's just funny. Or reminds me of a funny thing. Yep. Mr. Owl. Mr. Owl knows how many licks it takes to get to the center. Because he's in control. Yeah, it's a controlled thing. Three licks. It's a controlled three. <laughs> That's what we want in flint napping, right? Everything is controlled. That's what we want. That's the goal. That's the plan. That's the strategy. Everything controlled. There's a good reason for everything. Purpose. Everything's purposeful. Yeah. Right? It's got to be. If not, then how do you make stuff if it's not controlled and purposeful? Guess what? Sometimes you don't make stuff. Sometimes it breaks and you don't get nothing. Nothing. So what do you think about that one? Okay, so it's controlled all the way up to the break. But, no. It's a controlled break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. There was a crack. I'm going to blame it on the crack on the edge right there that made me lose the tip. Some kind of defect somewhere. I'm going to blame it on that. Yeah. Because it's an unusual break. If it was kind of straight across, and yeah, it was my fault. But why did it do that? There must have been a defect. Must have. Did I install a crack right there? It's possible. What am I gonna do now? Well, if it's a defect and it's gone, it's a good thing. Oh yes, no more defect, it's a good thing. And let's see how much we got left. Two and a three eighths. How many, how many we were betting on how big it would be? This video is not called Lumpy Nodule Maximization. Nope. So, you know, if you're going by the title, you kind of know. Yep. Yeah, I should do one of these live one of these days. One of these days. When I can nap close to my Wi-Fi, I will do it. But I'm not even, I'm not near my Wi-Fi. And every place that's near my Wi-Fi either has dogs that will be jumping all over me. Or it's a place where people walk a, a, a lot. And there will be chips everywhere. Although that hasn't really stopped me before. I just don't like doing it. I don't like to be where everyone's stepping and stuff. Because I have to be mindful of all the chips. I don't want to be distracted and say, oh, and there's a chip that went right there. Someone's going to step on it. Hold on, wait a second. I need to sweep it up. Or sweep up that mess right there. Because I know someone will come up and say, what are you doing? Wait, wait, don't step there. Don't, don't, don't. don't. There's something right there, don't step. What? What is it? What is it? <laughs> the chips. Chips. You eat chips while you flint nap? No, I make chips. You make the chips that you eat while you flint nap? Okay. <laughs> See, that's what I do to people when, uh, when uh, 
I'm talking to them and I want to mess with them. Yeah. So I was just uh, pretending someone would mess with me. No one messes me with me that way, though. They're also serious. You know, they come up and they ask me, what are you doing? Making airheads. What kind of airheads? Uh, the heads that go on arrows. No, no, no. I mean, are they, like, real? Yeah. Real pain in the butt. <laughs> That doesn't look like a pain in the butt. It looks easy. Can I try it? Oh my goodness. You want to try this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I want to try it. It doesn't look hard. Looks easy. Oh, they don't know. All these bright eyed newbies, they don't know. They don't know what they're getting themselves into. Uh, they kind of do. You know, you sit them down, give them a tool, they start chipping on it. And they go, why doesn't it chip? <laughs> well, it doesn't chip by itself. I mean, it looks like it might be chipping by itself. It looks like it might be telling you what to do. You know, you just kind of listen to the stone. It tells you what to do. Yeah. That's what some people think. And they say, it's not telling me what to do. I don't know what to do. All I end up with is a little chunk. How do you do that? How do you make it thin? What's the secret? What do you? What am I missing? And uh, if they're, you know, if they're gifted people, once in a while they just pick it right up. They don't ask any questions. They just look and do, look and do. They pick it up amazingly fast. They can't really make anything really, really nice, but they can get it thinned down. That's the biggest thing. I've seen new guys within a week. They get these things thinned down. Yeah. And from there, they're home free. Because they just pick up the pressure flaker and they go, is this good enough for pressure? I say, yep. And then that's it. That's all they want to know. They're off to the races. In a few months, they're making knife blades. And then they never make a video on how, how they learned it so fast. They're just out there making knife blades all day long. After a couple of months. Yep. And all they need to know is, is this good enough for pressure flaker? Yep. That's all they needed to know. Am I doing this right to thin it down? Well, apparently so. It looks like it's getting thinner. That's all I need to know. That's it. So for some people, yeah, it is easy. But for the vast majority, it's like, it's not doing it. It's not doing what I think it looks like it should do. My thought experiment brain that I thought was amazing, because I have amazing thought experiments, it's not knowing what is happening. I envision what's going to happen with my super stupendous thought experiment brain, and it's not panning out. What's the deal? This is the only thing in my life that does not pan out according to my thought experiments. Yeah. It's because there's risk. There's chaos. There's unpredictability. There's looking for opportunities. And then there's skills that you don't have that you need that are not apparent just by watching someone do it. Like, how do you keep your fingers out of the way? That's a big one. I keep hitting my fingers, man. Where's the glove? I Now I know where you wear a glove. I thought a glove was not even necessary. I see a lot of flint nappers teaching new guys, and they're not wearing gloves. Yeah, I know. They're not doing a lot of things that you take for granted that takes years of experience to know how to do. I don't teach new guys very much anymore. I used to answer a bunch of questions with new guys, but that's why I started making videos. 
it's much easier just to say please watch my videos yeah yeah that's got ads just get youtube premium or whatever they call it you don't see no ads and i still get revenue you know every once in a while well every once in a while when i check i see how many uh, how much revenue i get from people who have like youtube subscriptions to the premium so they don't see ads i still get revenue even though you don't see ads in case you didn't know oh okay yeah people been on youtube for two, for you know 10 years and they don't know these things So if I go to a napin, they'll ask me, how do I recognize you? I don't see your face in this video. Well, I have over a thousand videos. Really? Oh, yes. On chipping rocks? Yeah. Man, how many rocks can you chip? <laughs> I don't I don't want to I don't want to tell you how many rocks I've chipped what am I doing chipping rocks I'm a full-grown man what am I doing chipping rocks all day what is this accomplishing what does it tell us about the human brain I mean is it useful for knowing how the human brain works this is one of the oldest skills known to man so yes it does help to, you know, to help you understand how the human brain works. What people do with that information is up to them. I mean, it doesn't really affect you all that much, except give you a little bit of closure. Like, who are we and what's our purpose in life and... Yada yada yada. We're tool makers. We're the species that's into technology. We're the technology animal. Yep. The animal that understands technology. And that's what this is. Napping rocks is a type of technology. Now, what am I going to do with it? I'm just regularizing. Because I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It looks like it's going to be a barbed and tanged. Yeah. Easy peasy. As far as types go. It's kind of a no-brainer. Barbed and tanged. Yep. I mean, they're not easy to make. It's just kind of a no-brainer to choose a barbed and tang because there's a lot of them out there. They're kind of common, as far as I know. Now, I don't know that much about European archaeology. I have read many studies, but they're highly specific. You know, they get into <coughs> different aspects of What do they call it? Material culture? It's just, it's not just lithics. No. Material culture goes into all kinds of things. And uh, you can make arrowheads out of bones and antlers and seashells, and you can grind down various stones into nice shapes. And be very artsy fartsy about it. Yep. So, as I was reading during my stint of reading about European lithic technology and ancient cultures of Europe, I get this side 
sidetracked and uh, look at other technologies. Yeah. The pottery, the woodworking, the bone working, the microliths. My goodness, there's a whole science around microliths. Micro, M I C R O, liths, L I T H S. Microliths, a one word. Yeah, what they were using them for, they're thinking they were using them as tool tips, these little bitty flakes as tooltips for carving or engraving or tattooing or I don't know what. Anyway, I'm just trying to thin this down right now. It's got to be thinner. It's just got to be thinner. I can't leave it this thick. Yeah. This is a video. Yeah, it's a, it has to meet certain requirements for people not to change the channel within 35 seconds. I was looking at one of my videos, my analytics on one of my videos. On the other, the one that I did the the first piece out of this kind of stuff, it was a bigger nodule. That's got a pretty good amount of views, but you know what? They just watch for the first 30 seconds and that's it. It's like they only watch it for the ads or something? I don't know. but. Maybe when the first ad pops up, they just get impatient and they change the channel. I don't know, but the only the, in that particular video, forty-two percent I think were leaving after the first thirty seconds. Maybe they thought it was going to be something else. They never leave a comment on why they leave. There's a lot of comments on why people stay. But there's no comments on why they leave because you know what? They already left. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how that works. I wish they would comment before they leave. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, see ya. But they don't. It's too much to ask. You don't know why they leave. And then, as a YouTube creator, my analytics aren't worth anything. Yeah. got my computer fixed this week ah, now I can edit oh yes the only thing that I'm gonna be spending lots of time on is looking for editing software I might have to buy some stuff yeah I might have to buy some editing software because the ones that's the software that's for free you get you get what you pay for and if it's free, you don't get nothing. <laughs> you get stuff, but it's like... You gotta... Buy the full version. This is not the Pro. This is not the P-R-O. No. I mean, I can't even save the video once I got it all... Spliced together. It's not rendering because I gotta get the Pro. Yeah. Dang it. What good is it? I can't even render the video. Dang it. I think that only happened to me one time. Usually this, these video editors, you know, you can edit, you can save, you can do all that stuff without buying the full package. The full package will give you access to uh, picture in picture or something and then text add text and all these bells and whistles and stuff I need to add text YouTube used to be able to add notes and uh, if you make a mistake saying something you can just type in a note but YouTube got rid of all that stuff so now I gotta leave all my typos in my verbal typos if I say something wrong I can't type in a note where it flashes up on the screen with the correct wording. No, I just gotta leave the stupid wording in there. Yeah, YouTube is a jip. Nowadays, you used to be able to send private messages by YouTube also. No more. 
Now they got all these fancy gizmos if you monetize. I never seen so many bells and whistles after I monetized. I don't even use them. There's like supers, S-U-P-E-R-S, supers where you can donate money. Just donate money. Like if you see a video, you just click on a super. Or I don't know what. I think it's a dollar sign somewhere on the screen underneath the thumbnail. You can just send me money. Yeah. I got one friend of mine that does that. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even know. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And I think it's called Supers. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm sneaking in some subliminal messages, okay? I'm 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 kind of telling you how to give me money without telling you how to give me money. <laughs> without saying it out loud, without saying the quiet part out loud. That's what they say these days. Oh, he said the quiet part out loud. Gotcha. <laughs> but don't I always say the quiet part out loud? I got no filter, man. I got no filter. That's one of my flaws. On a on a job interview, uh, what would you say that uh, would be a, a place where you need some improvement? Man, I got no filter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's appropriate to, to tell you that you're. You didn't tie your tie correctly, or, you know, uh, I, I hate to mention this, but, you know, the, uh, I would have conducted the interview a little bit differently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I've never said that during an interview, but I remember some of my interviews where I wanted to kind of go. I would never interview someone like this. I mean, come on. Ask all these corny questions. I think what's happening when they ask you all these weird questions is they want to know how well you communicate. They don't listen to your... your uh, they don't listen for the meaning of what you're saying. They just want to know if you can communicate effectively. I think that's why they do it. I don't know the mind of the HR people. They got these weird ideas. Anyway. They just want to know if you, com if you can communicate effectively. They'll ask you a question, and uh, you answer, and they hear a little bit of it, and the rest is wah, 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 wah. They don't hear anything else except ex what they w were looking for. Yeah. Because it's important. You're in a, a, high, a relatively high-paying job. After a while, you get into these high higher paying jobs and they want to know if you can communicate effectively because once in a while they're going to call you in and go all right we need someone to give the presentation ah you mr crafty you're going to give the presentation please since that client's the one you're working for they want to hear it from you since you got to sign this this guy You gotta do the presentation. He wants to hear it straight from you. Really? Come on. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yes. You gotta do it. You scored high on the interview. I see here that they wrote down communication skills. Good. You got a check mark. So you got it. See you later. Take it easy. You got. You got like 20 minutes. <laughs> Dang it. Client's already here. You flew in from the UK or whatever. Dang it, man. I've only got 20 minutes. And you didn't tell me this before? I mean, it takes a long time to fly in from the UK. You couldn't have told me earlier? I'm thinking to myself. <laughs> no, a lot of times they just do everything on the fly. Which is okay. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not that hard. After a while, you can do presentations pretty fast, pretty easily. This is what I do. This is the information I have. Blah, blah, blah. 
this is what we're going to do for you. Yeah. Kind of like doing a YouTube video. Yeah. If you've already done presentations, doing a video is no big deal. And I've won, I've, well, not won, but uh, I've been in the presentation position and just winging it. And done all right. But it's kind of rude, you know, to tell someone you got you got you got like 15 minutes if if that's okay. And what are you gonna say? Uh, well, now that you mention it, <laughs> you are not gonna say it's not okay. You guys been in that situation? No. I don't know how I get myself in those situations. Yeah, but not anymore. I left that environment. Oh yes. I left it to deal with children. Oh joy. So much better. Yeah. You never get to stand in front of children and explain things. Nope. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. Yeah. With children, they got like a five-second window, if that, maybe 0.5 seconds of a window to get that, get your uh, point across. That's not right because of blah blah blah. But usually, it doesn't come out that way. It's like what you did there. It's not right. Yeah, but why? Why can't I do it? The question is very difficult to answer. And you're like, uh, that, that, that. see, I can do it. You're having a hard time figuring out why I can't. <laughs> yeah. I just don't want to scare you by telling you how much it's going to mess up your life if you continue down that road. You're going to open Pandora's box. What does that mean, opening Pandora's box? Okay. Yeah. They don't know, so, you know, they'll learn eventually. And then they'll ask, why didn't I get warned? Why didn't you warn me? I opened up Pandora's box, and you didn't warn me. <laughs> yeah, they don't say that, though. They know. They know they messed up, but they're not going to admit it. When children mess up, they don't like to admit it. Nope. So, yeah. It's, you know, it was good. I am glad, because I spent a lot of time away from my kids for many years. I say many, but uh, compared to my lifespan, I am 60 it wasn't that many years, and they grow up pretty fast, but I was away a lot. I worked a lot, and I considered work more important than sleep. I shouldn't have done that, because when you do that, all you want to do is sleep when you get around your family. Yeah. So that's all dad does. All that does. All dad does is look and act tired. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Mr. Grumpy and tired. That's it. For a long time. It's an easy way to be because they don't want to mess with Mr. Grumpy and Tired. They just don't want to mess with you. But then you don't get any interaction with your kids. And you don't realize how valuable that is until it's too late. Yep. Okay. Just in case, you know, not many are crazy enough to have children these days. And I understand completely.
Oh yes. So now I just work on rocks, make videos. Now that I got my computer up and running, I can do my drafting software again. Oh joy, I don't know if I want to do it. I don't know. No, 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 no. I guess that answers that question. I don't really feel like doing it. I can do it, but I'm not gonna. No. All right. What I'm gonna use my computer for is for video editing, and uh, I'm gonna make some playlists. Somebody asked me to do a playlist thing where I put the years. In playlists so that what they can do is they can just continuously play the videos and it'll be like many many hours of videos and they just keep it on a continuous play which is kind of cool I wouldn't have done that myself I don't know if, if I can listen to myself that long maybe other people can but uh, it's kind of cool so I'm gonna do some playlists I've already got playlists but they're old I haven't even gone back to check if they're still relevant because I've done a lot of repetitive type videos where I've, I've, I'm just rehashing stuff I've done in the past and maybe it's a little bit updated these days when I do a rehash and I, I, I don't put the new ones into a playlist like my heat treat videos my new ones they're not on a playlist my old ones are some of them are on a playlist. Anyway. This is going to be a Barbie and Tang. Barbie and Tang. Yeah, Barbie drinking Tang. Type arrowhead. <laughs> No one knows what Tang is, except, you know, in reference to arrowheads. No, I was surprised. I, uh, yeah, it's, it's a weird that I remember this, but I remember my kids were, like, crazy and insane for Nutella. Nutella. And I used to say, we had something similar called Kugel. Kugel? <laughs> Kugel? Yeah, Kugel. And Tang. Tang? Yes. Is it like Nutella? <laughs> no. I gotta admit, Nutella is like freaking awesome. But. We had versions of that stuff when I was little. I mean, it's not like I don't know about it. I don't know how it... I, it's like I don't know how addictive it is. I mean, they put they must put something in the Nutella to drive you insane because you can't stop eating it. Yeah, I buy some Nutella, right? Next day, the sink is full of these big spoons with Nutella smears on them. And I go into the cupboard and I look and the Nutella, all it's got is like scrape marks around the inside. And it's a big container of Nutella. Those kids would eat like 16 ounces of Nutella in one night. They all get their big spoons and they scoop it out. I caught them one time, right? You don't know how much Nutella can exist on a spoon until you see a kid do it. amazing remarkable physics i mean i had to rethink my whole world of physics after seeing that i cannot believe how much nutella was sitting on that spoon and there they are there they are watching spongebob or something similar yeah
and then I suppose they would go through that sugar crash afterwards and then they'd be laying around going oh I don't know if I feel so good give me some chocolate milk <laughs> yeah that was before that was before the no sugar thing I learned very slowly that sugar was a slow poison why it took so long because I was a big old TV watcher they don't mention this on TV that sugar is the devil no they don't mention it all they mention is all the types of sugar that you can eat yeah maple syrup fancy ice creams with toppings all these snacks with fancy sugary fillers I mean they do the opposite they get you familiar with what you can imagine that you're gonna put on top of your next dessert what type of sugar topping are you gonna put yeah that's it are we getting there so yeah they didn't like me after I learned about sugar and their mom their mom was insisting on no sugar at first and I said well it gives you energy yeah but it's not good how you just don't want to you just don't want them to have any fun that's what I thought because they they've been little rascals you don't want them to have any fun after they've been getting into some trouble so yeah no more sugar no oh, shucks. I found out sugar is pretty much the devil all right so what do I do now what do I do now after I broke off one of the bars and that shouldn't have done that nope shouldn't I wasn't pressing that hard it might have there might have been a crack on the side let me see so if there's any cracks along this it can open up so what do I do now that it's broken super glue yeah super glue I don't have any super glue but those are deep enough that you know it, it's an arrowhead now but are there any arrowheads that look like this and I take off the other barb yes there are in Europe yeah you just take you just just make it like that take off the other barb yeah no. all right so let's see yeah I can't tell why it, it's probably too much pressure yeah too much pressure on it Why, how did they used to do these back in the day when there was they're really deep notches and they didn't break off the barbs well it took them a few tries probably before they can get ones that have no barb breaks can you still use one of these with a barb break yeah I mean I can haft it to an arrow just like this it still works oh yes there's no reason for this not to work let's see get a stick stick it on there I mean it still works I mean it's lopsided but it still works yeah see 
Now there are some arrowheads that have uh, some that are built that way where there's one barb only, but it's usually pointy. It's not like this. But I would still use it. If I was back in the day and I did that, I would still use it. Because it's still got these two cutting edges. Yeah. Why not? Should I take that off? Or leave it? I don't know. It's not quite an hour yet. I can still, you know, do edge work and that kind of stuff. And thin it down a little bit more. Maybe, is it bad luck? Some of you guys might know. Or, maybe not know, but maybe you you can speculate that it's it was considered bad luck to use a broken point on an arrow. Because it you never found one like this. No one's ever found one like this where it's napped on one side because the bar broke off. No. Nope. Well then it, that that kind of gives a clue that maybe it's bad luck to use one like this. Or maybe it makes the arrow fly funny. I don't think it makes the arrow fly funny. I've tried different types of arrowheads on arrows and as long as you you get the center, you know, you spin it around and you see that that's, it's centered, it flies pretty good. If it's not centered, it still flies okay, but when it hits the target, that's when it starts doing weird things. All right. Like not penetrating. You know. Where am I? Where am I at? This is where I'm at. I got to do the the edge work. I'm gonna sharpen this up. So to sharpen it up, you've got to uh, abrade at least a little bit. Yeah. For those who don't know, all right. Now where is my? I have a little a little flick. Here we go. I got this, I sharpened this up the other day, but I think it's a little bit too sharp. So I'm going to dull it. Yes, it's the taboo. Usually you, you sharpen these things up, but this one's just too pointy. Okay. And I'll use it to work on the edge. Sharpen it up. Can you see? Just picking it, picking at it. The nail's a little bit flexible when it's this long. The flexibility can help to drive some flakes. That's the theory. Now, did it drive any flakes a long distance? Kind of, sort of, like right there. That one went pretty good. For that cruddy area, that stone is cruddy on that side. So that flake is good for that particular material on that side. Uh, I gotta get a good area. I can't, so let's flip it over and see if I can take some off the other side. And I'll come back and try to flake it again on that side. So I'm just randomly looking for nasty spots to pick at. Once I get it more regularized, then I can do a continuous pass. But in the meantime, I'm gonna regularize it. Because there's nothing more entertaining than watching a monotonous single pass with the same flake over and over again. Nothing more entertaining than that that's what everybody wants to see. Yeah, I'm being sarcastic. Because I don't know why they want to see it. I mean, it's true. They want to see it. Continuous pass. With all the same flake. So interesting. <laughs>
And if you're one of those people that likes to see that, I'm not making fun of you. No. I never make fun of people. Never. When have you known me to make fun of people? Hmm? <laughs> Yeah. These new guys, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if he's made funny people. I've never seen this before. What is it? <laughs> I thought it was flit napping. I didn't realize it was Mr. Goof around. Mr. Goof time. It's Mr. Goof, like Mr. Bean, but Mr. Goof. Yeah. Mr. Magoo, because I got I got glasses. Well, Mr. Magoo would lose his glasses. So I suppose I could take my glasses off and be Mr. Magoo for the rest of the video. I could do that. I won't be able to see, just like you can't see. Mm-hmm. All right, so one more pass of a little bit of grinding. I don't like this part where I have to dull a sharp edge, but to get it thinner and to do a, a continuous pass on the other side, it's got to be dulled. It just can't get around it. That way you can find areas to push on. Yep, and those little bulbs scoop out the edge and produce a thin, sharp edge. Those little bulbs, although I didn't do that much on the barb. You can't push too hard here because it'll snap the barb off. Not that it's something I never do, but uh, it'll look better up here. Hold on. I'll be able to show you the bulbages better up here. And hopefully show you how it's sharpening it. Can you see? Come on camera. The, the edge is thinner here. Oh no, I don't know. It's the same. Anyway, in theory, if I can push off you know, nice flakes, it creates a nice bulb. Maybe this is too flexible to create these nice bulbs. The bulbs will thin down the edge. What bulbs am I talking about? These little bulbs of pressure. There's bulbs of percussion, but there's also bulbs of pressure. Yeah. Whenever you remove a flake, there's a little bulb whether you're using pressure or percussion. Was it blurry the whole time? I'm thinking it was. Oh well. Anyway, I'm cleaning up the edges now. This is about as sharp as it's going to get. Yeah. I can do a little bit more on the... Getting rid of some of the lumpy spots but I, I think I'm encountering some issues with the tip of the flaker because it's not strong enough and it's maybe a little bit too flexible it's not pushing those flakes very far not like I can do it with the a heavier flaker. Yeah. I don't know. See, it's skinnier in one way than it is the other way, so I have that issue as well. It's better to have it perfectly round or even uh, four sided, but equal. So I'm having to deal with that unequalness. I 
and I'm explaining this at this stage because I get lots of questions. And I'm not saying anything because I don't want to mess this up. Come on. It's hard to find the areas where you can push on. But they're there. Just got to find them. But not like that. Steppy, steppy. Not like that, okay? Make sure you don't do it like that. Gotta come back and damage control it by popping a flake that way. You see, there's. You get these little stuff fractures. You see those on the real artifacts. These things. These little short flakes from the, the edge. You get these little steps. That means the guy was not that great at sharpening in a perfect way. You know? But you know what? It doesn't need to be sharpened in a perfect way in order to be effective. Yeah, I was asked if maybe I can start discussing real artifacts again. I don't want to. I really don't want to. Why? Because i got to read a lot of research in order to start discussing it again. i got a lot of it in memory, but to be specific, like if I wanted to research these barbed and tangs, I would have to go to a certain area of the UK or whatever and research that certain area. It just takes for forever. I barely have enough time to get all my stuff ready by the end of the week. If I don't have to do no research, it makes life so much easier. And it's not doing it's not doing me any good. Nope. I got like a few really diehard archaeology fans. The rest are just here so they can fall asleep. So the views don't go up that much. If I do an archaeology oriented video. I get more views if I work on stuff that's very difficult and odd shaped. That's odd shaped, right? No one, you, you don't see anyone doing those. No. See, what do you call that? It's not. Is it? It's it's partially barbed and tanged. Let me, let me try to think of a good name for it. Or you guys can think of a good name. One barb. It's, it's barbed in tang, but it's only one barb in, in one tang. It's not two barbs. <laughs> it's a unibarb. Yeah, it's a unibarb. There you go. There you go. One hour to... Hey, come on, there you go. To witness the unibarb. Perfect for the thumbnail. Yes, yes. Alrighty. And there you go.